protein synthesis can be broken down into two primary steps, transcription and translation. First, DNA. DNA is made up of four nitrogenous bases. Adenine and thymine always pair together because of attracting charges, and guanine and cytosine always pair together. Each rung of the DNA ladder is made up of one of these pairs. RNA structure basically looks like what DNA would if you split it in half. It doesn't spiral in a double helix and is just a single strand. The only difference is that RNA doesn't have thymine. The nitrogenous base that replaces it is called uracil. There are three kinds of RNA, messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA, and transfer RNA. mRNA leaves the nucleus after transcription and carries the coding sequence for proteins. rRNA helps to form ribosomes where translation occurs, and tRNA carries amino acids, which are building blocks of proteins, to the ribosome during translation. During transcription, the primary goal is to create a strand of mRNA that can exit the nucleus to be translated. Each cell in the body has the same DNA, since cells replicate through mitosis, which just means they make exact copies of themselves. What makes a skin cell different from a liver cell are transcription factors. Transcription factors bind to specific sequences of DNA, called regulatory sequences. By doing so, transcription factors help to either attract or block Tata binding protein, or TBP. TBP attracts RNA polymerase to the promoter, which will signal the start of transcription. Basically, each cell has different transcription factors, which means that the cell will produce different proteins and can thus serve a different function. If the RNA polymerase binds to the promoter, transcription will begin. Helicase will unwind the double helix structure, and RNA polymerase will follow behind the helicase on one strand, pairing the opposite nitrogenous base. Once the RNA polymerase transcribes the terminator, a specific sequence in the DNA, it will stop and release the mRNA. Once the mRNA is released, it will undergo splicing. Unnecessary pieces of the RNA will be removed, and the remaining pieces will be bonded together and leave the nucleus. During this time, a poly-A tail, which is an extended chain of adenine, may be attached, which will later help to produce more copies of the protein during translation. The primary purpose of translation is to decode the strand of RNA into a chain of amino acids, which are building blocks for proteins. The mRNA will travel out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm, to a ribosome. Each section of three nitrogenous bases is called a codon. Each tRNA holds an amino acid as well as an anticodon, an opposite nitrogenous base sequence for every codon. Depending on the anticodon, each tRNA will have a different amino acid. The ribosome and the initiator tRNA will attach to the mRNA in a place called the start codon. Once the initiator tRNA attached to the start codon, a second tRNA will bond with the second codon on the mRNA, and the ribosome will remove the amino acid and bond it with the amino acid on the next tRNA. Gradually, a protein will be formed. This will continue until the ribosome reaches the stop codon. The mRNA chain will be released, and the chain will either go to another ribosome to be retranslated or destroyed by RNAs. Each time the mRNA goes through translation, a small part of the end breaks off. If it has a poly-A tail, the longer the tail, the more times it can be translated. Imagine it this way. The nucleus of the cell is a school. Inside the school are textbooks, teachers, and students. The textbooks represent the DNA. They contain all the raw information. The teachers represent the RNA. They take the information from the textbook and relay it to the students, which represent the ribosomes. The students then take that information and make something out of it, whether it's a homework assignment, a video, a song, or a new discovery.